Hey, this is Terry B from pinballrehab.com and today we're going to talk about shorted diodes in the switch matrix. Here's our switch matrix. At the top we have eight columns, also called the strobe or send lines. And on the left we have eight rows, also called the return lines. The system will strobe or pulse across the columns, dropping each one low sequentially, starting with one, moving across to the second column, and so on until it has gone across all eight columns. As the system drives each column low, it monitors all of the rows, looking for the rows to go low, which they will if a switch is closed. So if we look at our switch here, when it closes, column one, row two, will sense a low, and the system knows that switch is closed. It then continues on and checks the rest of the columns and all of the rows for each column. The matrix contains 64 switches, each with its own diode. These are called isolation diodes, and their purpose is to allow current to flow in one direction, but not in the opposite direction. When a column is strobed, and one of the switches closes, the diode allows current to flow in that direction. So let's look at a scenario where we've got a shorted diode. So column three, row three, that diode is shorted and current can flow in the opposite direction. So let's say we're strobing column six and we have a switch that is closed during gameplay. As the switch closes, current will flow through the switch, but it can't flow backwards through the diode since the switch that goes with the diode is still open. So in this case, there's no problem. Even though we have a failed component, no problem will show up. Now, Let's see what happens if the switch with a shorted diode is closed. In this case, although the current can flow backwards through the diode, since none of the other switches are closed, we again will not have anything that indicates a problem. But if one of the other switches is closed, now the current has a path to flow through another switch and over to the row. What this creates is that the system, although the switch in column three, row five was closed, it also thinks the switch in column six, row five was closed. For this problem to show up, it requires a shorted diode with its switch closed and two other switches closed. And then a fourth position will falsely indicate that it's closed when it is not. These four switches will always form either a box or a rectangle. The first step is to go into switch diagnostics and see what's happening. Almost all games are going to have some normally closed switches, which I'm indicating. These might be trough switches, end of stroke switches, or something else in the game. So we'll put a couple of more normally closed switches over here. Now let's say that column seven, row two, well, we'll do row three instead. The switch closes, and when it closes, we get a false indication that column three, row seven, has been closed. 
If you remember our rectangle or box theory, all we have to do is draw a rectangle between the four corners and then we can see the possible points of failure. So each one of these three diodes needs to be checked, including the one in the upper right, which I forgot to circle. Now let's look at a little bit more complicated scenario. Again, we'll set up some normally closed switches. We'll do four over here, and then we'll do a few over on the right-hand side. And then in switch diagnostics, we'll manually close a switch. In this case, when we close the switch, we get a false indication that the switch in column three, row two, was also closed. As we learned earlier, we can make a rectangle to see where our problem might be. But in this case, it's a little bit more complicated because if you look at this, you'll notice we can actually make three rectangles. And the problem can be in any of the bottom six diodes or the upper right diode. So we can either check all seven diodes or one by one, open up one of the normally closed switches and then do our test again. Open up the next normally closed switch, do our test again. At whichever point we open up a switch and the problem goes away, we have now narrowed, narrowed it down to three diodes that we need to test. Although normally closed switches will exacerbate the problem, in some cases you need to have two switches manually be closed before we see the problem show up. So again, we'll mark off four trough switches. And then while we're playing the game, we notice that when this switch, say it's for a vertical up kicker that holds a ball, is closed. And at the same, at the same time, this switch closes. Then we get a false indication of a switch closing in column two, row two. Again, we can draw a rectangle and the problem will be with one of the three diodes, either the two on the bottom or the one on the right. In some cases, you can have multiple switches that give different false indications of other switches being closed. So let's say we've got a shorted diode and then we have a couple of normally closed switches. If we close this switch manually, we get an indication that this switch has closed because of our shorted diode. And you can see there's a rectangle when we connect the four corners. Also though, if we close this switch manually, we will get an indication that the switch above it is closed even though it isn't. And again, we can draw a rectangle to connect the four parts. For more information and a complete discussion of the switch matrix theory, operation, and troubleshooting, check out www.pinballrehab.com and put matrix in the search engine.